perseverance allows me to love the Lord my God with everything that I am. Yes, sir. To put him first and not anything else. Amen? Right. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. He's saying, get dressed in tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another. Somebody give God love. 
Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. And this is for each of us. Let everything that has breath do what? Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Again, praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. You may be seated as deacon uh, Larry Nicholson comes with our prayer of intercession at this time. Good morning, church. Good morning, first time guests. It's good to see some familiar faces out there today. Good to see you, Sister Patrick, and uh, everybody else that's coming to church today. Uh, welcome to those of you who are watching on YouTube and Facebook also. The importance of our prayer praying is seen in if we are regular in prayer, it means we are dependent upon God. But if we are not regular in prayer, it means we are dependent on ourselves and we don't think we need God. The Bible says the prayer of a fervent and intentional heart, the prayers are answered. It also says in the Bible to pray without ceasing. Um, Lord, as, as I stand here today and, and give you praise and, and prayer, Lord, um, our country, Lord, the way it's divided, um, we have churches now getting fences put around them so people can't worship in them, Lord. Um, the prayers are ever so more important today, Lord. We need a prayer without ceasing. Um, we need prayer for just the unity of this country to come back together, Lord. We know we've seen in the Bible where you've done it before. You know, Lord, and the end times are coming, I feel, Lord. And, it, you know, it says in the Bible, too, if there is one good person left in the in the town lord you won't destroy it lord so i just ask that you look upon our nation with favor lord that you heal this nation lord um, i pray for the projects in this church that are going on inside of it i pray for the projects uh, going on outside of it lord i pray for each and every one of us lord to look at how many pages we flip on facebook lord and if we take half those minutes and use them in prayer lord how much more we would be praising you, Lord. So I just thank you for everything you've done for me, Lord. I know that my life is nothing without you, and, and I do feel your presence in prayer, Lord. So, Lord, I just thank you for this beautiful day we are having today and give you all the praise and glory. Amen.
to gaze upon your glory and to sing to you this song. Only in the way we keep making mistakes. The glory is not for us, it's all for you. don't have much to bring my heart is torn to pieces it's my own It's time to make a change. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. I surrender. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody? One of the ways that we surrender all is through our praise and through our worship. Yes, sir. Miss yes, Mann said, if you want to praise him, you have to go to him. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. why she said, take me to the king. Yes, sir. I lay it all at his feet. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, I ask that you... Uh, in the Old Testament, if you would turn to the book entitled Job, it's a reflection of Job's life, a portion of his life, and we're going to read uh, just nine verses from the first chapter beginning at verse 13. Job, the first chapter, verses 13 through 22. I'm reading from the New International uh, Translation. Give me just a moment to, uh, to find that. Very familiar passage of scripture. Even if you don't remember the actual verses, I'm sure you understand this scenario. Yes, sir. Job 1. Verses 13 through 22. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby and the Sabaeans attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he, that is, that messenger was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants, 
and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he, that second messenger, was still speaking, another, a third messenger, came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Yes, sir. While he, that is the third messenger, was speaking, yet another, that's a fourth messenger, came and said, Job, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And uh, with a very familiar refrain, he said, I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up, tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in what? Worship. And said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Amen. You may be uh, seated. I want to... Uh, speak from uh, the subject praising God in the storm praising God in the storm Uh, you may recall that our preaching theme for the month of April uh, is worship which in my opinion is the supreme activity of a Christian Some define worship as what we do here in the sanctuary, and and that is true, that that worship occurs here, but worship is also what we do when we're all by ourselves, when we're just one-on-one with Jesus, amen? And and we know that uh, worship includes singing praises. Uh, It's also when we're just quiet with the Lord, amen? Uh, Worship includes preaching, and it also includes prayer. Right. Worship takes place on Sunday, right. but worship also takes place on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and again on Sunday. That's Amen. Right. Right. Uh, last week, uh, Pastor Norval shared the story of Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. Right. Uh, and he just reminded us that as Jesus was uh, talking with the woman, uh, he proclaimed that uh, God is spirit. And that those who worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Uh, I believe that the truth that was shared with us is that God is not concerned about where we worship. Because we can worship him while riding in our cars on the way to the sanctuary. Amen? Uh, God is also not concerned about how we worship but he's much more concerned about whether we choose to worship in spite of our circumstances, in spite of our situations, in spite of our life challenges. Well, if we turn to our text, Job is an example of godly praise and worship in spite of his life challenges. And we know that life challenges can be a barrier to our praise, amen? So uh, let me see if I can set the stage for what's occurring in in Job's life. Uh, Within this this first chapter of the book of Job, we're told that one one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. Amen? And Satan, a fallen angel, also came with them. Then in the midst of this gathering, we witness a conversation between Satan and God. God asked Satan, where you been, Satan? Satan has a response. He said, I've been walking to and fro in the earth, seeking whom I might destroy. Uh, Then God reminds Satan of one of his faithful servants, and he begins to praise and celebrate Job's faithfulness. In the eighth verse, he asks, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns 
evil. Right, right. That's what God said. Well, right. if you're not careful, you'll get sucked into some of Satan's lies. And uh, we see one right here because Satan claimed that Job's faithfulness is only the result of God's blessings that have been placed on Job. Right, right. And Satan goes on to claim that God, if, if you remove those blessings, if you take that hedge from around him, Job is no longer going to praise you, but he's going to curse you instead. Right. So what happens? God gives Satan permission to attack Job. He says in the 12th verse, everything that he has is in your power, but on the man himself, don't lay a finger. In other words, you can take his livelihood, but you can't take his life. Well, my brothers and my sisters, before examining the unraveling of Job's entire, entire life in wave after wave of disaster, devastation, and death, Let's understand the importance of praising and worshiping God. All right, all right. First of all, praise and worship is the act of magnifying and honoring God for who he is and thanking him for his many blessings. It's also important to understand that we praise and worship God for many reasons. First of all, the Bible commands it. I just read in the 150th number of Psalms that everything that has breath right. should praise the Lord. Right. Right. Are you breathing today? Yes, sir. If you're breathing today, you need to understand that the Bible is commanding you to do what? Praise, praise the Lord. Yes, praise also invites God into our situations. The 22nd number of Psalms in the third verse tells us that God inhabits the praise of his people. Yes, yes. And, and, and I, I'm just firmly uh, aware of the fact that our praise is a primary way that God works his way into our hearts and into our minds. Yes. I believe that God steps into our worship and magnifies himself through our praise and worship. Yes, sir. Now, let me give you a little bit more detail about that because I believe that our praise facilitates access to God. Look at the 100 number of Psalm, verse 4. What does, it tell us? what does it tell us? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Well, let me ask you this question. What was on your mind when you came to church today? Uh, when you were driving here from your home, what kind of music was playing on the radio? or your connection to Spotify or whatever you listen to. All right, all right. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that most of us want to connect with God, but I simply ask you that when you enter his gates, do you do so with thanksgiving and praise? Or do you enter his gates with other things on your mind? Uh, are you concerned about what someone said, what someone posted on Facebook? Are you concerned about the fact that you've got a financial issue or a health issue? Or are you entering to his courts with, Lord, I simply thank you for who you are. Lord, I thank you for what you've done. Lord, in spite of what might be going on in my life right now, I simply say thank you, Jesus. Is he worthy of your praise? Yes, I believe that there is no one more deserving of our praise Amen. than God. Amen. 18th number of Psalm, verse 3, 2 Samuel 22 and 4, Chronic, 1 Chronicles 16 and 25. All of those verses, and I'm not going to try to read them all to you. They all tell us one thing, that the Lord is worthy of praise. Why is he worthy? He's worthy because he's our creator, our provider, our sustainer. Yes, he's also our savior. He's yes, worthy of our praise. Yes, Amen. Uh, without him, nothing was made and without him, no one would exist. He's yes, worthy of our praise. Yes, he is a possessor of all wisdom and knowledge and he is the source of every good and perfect gift. Yes. He is worthy of our praise. Yes, if you're here this morning, let me just remind you that it was he who woke you up this morning. It was he who started you on your way. It was he that allowed there to be a roof over your head and some amount of food, even if it was just water coming out of your faucet, available to you. You have shoes on your feet. You have some clothes on your back. It was God 
who provided that. And he is worthy to be praised. Amen? He's worthy to be praised. Yes, sir. Well, there is one, however, who hates it when you praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. His name is Satan. That's right. Isaiah chapter 14. If you haven't read it in a while, why don't you read it? Amen. Because it, it tells the story of Lucifer's fall. We call him Satan now, but originally his name was Lucifer. Uh, he was one of the good angels. Amen. Uh, he, he was God's praise leader, but because of his pride, because he sought to be greater than God himself, he got kicked out of heaven and doomed to eternal destruction. And, and now he just cannot stand it when we praise God, because when we praise God, that's what Satan want it for himself but he'll never get it amen? amen that's why he'll do his best as the scripture tells us to kill steal and destroy your desire to say thank you Jesus amen. you want to make the devil mad praise the Lord you want to get on his bad side say thank you Jesus just say I love you Lord yes, sir. Satan cannot stand it amen and we have to understand that when Paul talked to us in Ephesians 6 and 12, he was helping us to understand what our issue is and who we are fighting against. He said, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. He's trying to help us to understand that it is Satan who's doing his best to destroy our relationship with God. John 10 and 10, Jesus tells us that the epitome of spiritual wickedness is found in our enemy, Satan. Yes, sir. It says that Satan is like a thief who comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's why we're told by the Lord to be alert and of a sober mind, right. watching out for the schemes of the devil, right, right. prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may destroy. Right, right. Your virgin may say, seeking someone to devour. Amen? Right. What does he want to devour? He wants to devour your joy. Hmm. He wants to steal your faith. Right. He wants to take away your peace. Right. He wants to just mess up your life. Yes, sir. And he definitely wants to kill your worship. Yes, sir. And the best way for him to do that is to attack your relationship with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, if we return to our text, we see that Satan goes on the attack All right. in order to steal Job's joy. I mean, right. the scriptures, God himself said that, that Job was an upright man, that he was just, that you know, he, he, he didn't sin, he was righteous. But before we look at how Job was attacked, let me remind you of a few things about Satan's attacks. First of all, Satan can only attack you if God allows it. Satan had to ask God's permission to attack Job, and God granted it, but he placed some limitations on what Satan can do. He said, everything that he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. In other words, you can take his livelihood, but you can't touch his life. Amen. I think it's also important for us to understand that even when God allows Satan to attack us, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 tells us, that no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to mankind. Yes, and then here's the beauty in that, in that passage. He says, and God is faithful. Aren't you so glad that he's faithful? That means that he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, what is he going to do? He'll provide a way of escape. He'll provide a way out so that you can endure it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Satan doesn't have all the power. No, sir. Only God has all the power in his holy and his righteous hands. Amen. So it's important that we realize that when Satan attacks, yes, sir. all things work together for the good of those who love the God and are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8 and 28. And, and, and when Paul in that passage of scripture uses the phrase work together in the context of suffering, he wanted the Romans to know that when God permits an attack, it's never without purpose. 
and God causes all of our circumstances to cooperate with his divine plan. Uh, I, I'm reminded of a story that I heard a pastor share once uh, about a man who uh, was part of a shipwreck and he was one of the few survivors. He was able to make his way to uh, a deserted island and, and uh, he was on the island and he was praying for uh, a ship to come by and get him, but day after day passed, nothing would happen. Uh, no ships would come by. Uh, so he began to explore the island. He basically said to himself, I've got to prepare to be here for maybe the rest of my life. So uh, he found some driftwood and some palm fronds, and he was able to make a little hut for himself as a shelter. Uh, he was able to, uh, after a while, to, to make a fire out front so that he could cook his fish on. And so he, he believed, well, I, I, I'll just continue to pray and, and hopefully the Lord will send some help. Uh, uh, well, several weeks went by and, and one day he went out and he was scavenging for things. And, and uh, when he came back, he saw that his hut was in flames. You've heard this story before. I know you have. And he began, Lord, why did you do this to me? Lord, why did you steal my hut? That was the only shelter that I had. Uh, why did you do this, Lord? And he, and he just laid down and went to sleep. Well, the next morning he was awakened by the sound of a ship's horn and he looked up and there was a ship coming towards this little small desert island and, and, and the ship sent out a little rowboat, picked him up and brought him back to the bigger ship. And when he got on board that ship, he said to the captain, how did you know that I was here? And the captain said, I saw your smoke signal. <laughs> Don't tell me that God can't work all things for your good. Amen. Amen. God is always at work in our lives, yeah. even during the most stress-filled circumstances. And we would all agree that the last year has been stress-filled. Yes, sir. But let me help you with, with just, just this reminder that if you trust in the Lord with everything that you are and everything that you have, well, when you depend on his truth and not your own truth, yes, you are able to get through anything because God said, I'll make your path straight. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I don't want to hold you too long. So let's re return to our text beginning at the 13th verse. We see that Satan thought he could turn Job from God right, right. by taking away from him those things that God had blessed Job with. Right, right. Took his oxen, took his donkeys, took his sheep, took his camels, even took his sons and daughters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Job was hit with bad news after bad news after bad news. All right. All right. Can you imagine your, your cell phone just blowing up <laughs> with text message after text message or phone call after phone call telling you that everything that you had worked so hard for was now gone and everybody that you love right. had also been taken away. But what was Job's response to the bad news? Verse 20 tells us that he fell to the ground and worship. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord giveth, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, if you believe and trust in the Lord, you can trust him in the midst of your storm. Uh, that's the attitude of the songwriter Horatio Spafford had when he wrote a popular hymn after several traumatic events in his life. First, his four-year-old son died. Uh, and then during the great Chicago fire, he was almost totally ruined financially. Uh, so he planned a, a trip for he and his family uh, to England in order to put together some additional business connections. And he had planned to travel with his family, but something came up and he had to send his family on ahead. Uh, so his wife and four daughters traveled ahead. Amen. Well, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship carrying his family sank all four of his daughters died and only his wife survived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shortly after which his Spafford traveled on that same ocean uh -huh. to meet his grieving wife. Yes, yes. 
he was inspired to write these words. When peace like a river well, attended my way, right. when sorrows like sea billows roll, yes, sir. whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, yeah. it, is well. it is well, it is well with my soul. Another verse, he says, though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, yeah. let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate, has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, Satan thought that taking away Job's stuff would destroy his praise, but it didn't. I'm reminded of what Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. He said, we are hard-pressed on every side. Anybody here ever been hard-pressed? But not crushed. He said, we're perplexed. In other words, we can have some mental confusion. He said, however, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted. Anybody here been persecuted? But he needs you to understand that you have not been abandoned. You might have been struck down, but you are not destroyed. The truth is there will be times when we feel down and out. But just because you're down doesn't mean you have to be out. Right. Satan knows that when we are oppressed and persecuted, if we're not careful, we'll begin to think that we have no hope, no source of comfort, and no reason to praise the Lord. But I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. Paul says because of the power of the Lord, we don't have to feel crushed or in despair. Because of our relationship with God, when, not if. Amen. When, when. not if. Yes, sir. Trouble comes our way. Yes, sir. Just don't be surprised. Yes, sir. Don't get discouraged. Yes, sir. Don't be depressed. Amen. Don't become bitter. Right. Don't give up. Right. Don't give in. And above all, don't stop praising the Lord. Yes, Just remember, as one songwriter says, there are some things you might not know. There are some places you cannot go. But he said, I am sure of this one thing. My God is real, for I can feel him deep within. Yes, Anybody ever felt the realness of God? Has anyone here ever been in the midst of a situation that you did not have an answer for? You turned to God and he had an answer for you. Anyone here felt like you couldn't go another further, but God said, I will be your strength. I'll get you not down the road, but I'll get you through whatever you are going through. My God is real. So no matter how deep the valley, how troublesome your trial or how difficult your trouble might be, you can still praise the Lord. But he, because he tells us so many beautiful things in his word. Yeah, right. He said, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Yeah. And if you do that, he goes on and he says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts from Satan, will guard your minds from Satan, if you are a child of the king. And because of what he is able to do, I'm here to tell you, he is worthy to be praised. God's grace is sufficient for you, for it is his power that is made perfect in our weakness. In other words, you need to recognize that he's worthy to be praised because of what he's able to do. Uh, even though you might walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as David said, you shouldn't have any fear of any evil because God is with you. He also said in the New Testament, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I believe that he's worthy to be praised. If you're feeling like you're about to lose your praise, just lift up your eyes to the hills from what's coming to your help. All your help comes from the Lord. He's the maker of heaven and earth. <laughs> He's our refuge and our strength. He's our ever having, ever help, ever present help in times of trouble. He is worthy to be praised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If any of you like are like me, you've gone through some tough times. But if you look around, or as I often say, just reach out with your right hand or left hand and touch your arm, you'll, you'll find out that you're still here today. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why are you still here? Because greater is he that is in you than that little he that is right. in the world. Right. He's worthy to be praised. Satan thought the death of Jesus was his greatest victory. But all Satan did was just, just seal his own defeat. I know that if Satan hadn't known that the very blood 
that he was so happy to see Jesus shed on that cross called Calvary, if he had known that that shed blood is the very blood that would wash away our sins, he would have not wanted, it, wanted to see it being spilled. So when the storms of life are raging, my brothers and my sisters, yes, sir. know that you're still safe in the hands of Jesus yes. who died on an old rugged cross. Yes, sir. You're still safe in the hands still of safe. Jesus because even though he was placed in a borrowed tomb, he did not remain there. Amen. We reminded ourselves two Sundays ago that it was quite early on a Sunday morning right, right. that he rose Yes, with all power in all his hands. Yes, sir. Some people say, and I'm sure this was Satan's belief that when they nailed him to that cross that Jesus hit rock bottom or, or that he was on a dead end street. Uh -huh. But I've learned that rock bottom can be a solid ground for a comeback. Right. Amen. A dead end street is a good place to make a turnaround. Yes, sir. Anybody here a witness to Having hit rock bottom. Yes, sir. But you were able to make a comeback. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, my brothers and my sisters, just as Jesus rose, we can rise again every time life knocks us down. Yes, yes. Proverb 24, 16 reminds us that a righteous man may fall seven times. But if he's a righteous man, a righteous woman, a righteous child, he will get up again. Amen? Amen? So yes, you will have trouble, but in the midst of your trouble, you don't have to tear your clothes and go shave your head like Job did, but you can still praise him. Amen? Amen. Just remember that there is one called Jesus who has overcome the world. Some call him the lily of the valley. Some call him the bright and morning star. Some give him the name Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, right. the line of Judah. Right. I will simply want to tell you that he is the one who can He's give you one. peace yes, in the middle of your storm. So yeah. praise him right. in, spite in spite of whatever you're going through. Praise him praise in him. spite of it. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, I'm about to take my seat, but before closing, I just simply want to let you know that the greatest barrier to your being able to praise God is sin. All right. Yes, sir. Sir, sin. Sin eternally separates us from God. Yes, sir. And sin also causes us to lose fellowship with God. Something about when we, I don't know about you, but when I uh, made mistakes as a kid, maybe even as an adult. <laughs> but my, my analogy really works when I share it as uh, a time when I was a kid. If I had disobeyed my mother or done something wrong, oh, wow, I had a hard time. For, I didn't want my mom to find me. I didn't want her to see me. I didn't want, uh, Ralph, where you been? Oh, gee. I'll never forget, uh, I was walking home from school and uh, one of my neighbors was moving and, and they had a lot of trash on the curb. And I noticed in the trash can that there were, I think, five or six little plastic uh, soldiers. All right, all right. Now these aren't the really neat articulated soldiers that you can get today. These were the little molded green plastic uh, right. soldiers and they had the little base and you kind of... Yeah. Congressman, you may know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I, I saw this, this, these five or six, I can't remember exactly how many, soldiers in the trash. And I said, oh, gee, they're in the trash. I'll take these home. So I, I'm, I'm sitting, should I say, yes, yeah, sitting on the ground outside, and I'm playing with my new Army <laughs> soldiers. I'm having a great time. They're at war with each other. Right. One side is winning, the other side is losing. Right. And my mom happens to come out for some reason or another. And she said, Ralph, where'd you get those little army men? All right. All right. 
And even though I thought I had done right, I knew enough for the Holy Spirit <laughs> to tell me that I really had done wrong. Let me tell you why I believe that. My mom said, where'd you get them? Now, you have to understand that back in that day, I know the kids are downstairs, but back in that day, uh, you didn't have so many toys that your parents didn't know what you had. They knew exactly every toy that you had. <laughs> and so my mom quickly did an inventory of my toys. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun with a stick, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> stick was a horse. It was. Yeah, yeah. Ralph, where did you get those army men? Well, I was walking home from school, and Mrs., I can't remember what their name was at the time. They're moving. And these were in the trash can, sitting on the curb. My mom simply asked me a simple question. Did you ask for them? Uh, all right. All right. That's what my head did. And so consequences occur. And when she asked the first question, I felt bad. Right, right. God, when, I mean, you can't hide anything from God. And when you have done wrong, by the way, that's called sin. I know we don't like to use that word a lot because we think it's old fashioned or too traditional. But when we do wrong, when we are disobedient to God, He knows it. And we know it too. And if we're not careful, we'll try to hide it. When we try to hide our sin from God, you cannot praise God. You can't do it. Try it. If you want to praise God, if you want to be able to have that close relationship with him, you got to clean the slate. And it's easy for us to clean the slate. It's called confession. And that's what I had to do with my mom. My dear, I'm sorry. She said, that's okay. Take them on back. You know, I had to take those army men back, put them in the trash can, <laughs> then return home and, and get my consequence. And I'll just put it this way. I didn't get stood in the corner. <laughs> that would have been so, so much better. So if there's something standing in the way of your praise, Take a close look in the mirror. Ask yourself, Lord, is there something that I've done that stands between you and I, that stands in the way of my being able to praise you? If, I, if you have a good relationship with the Lord, you want to tell him how much you love him. If you have a good relationship with someone, you, you, you want to just... You know, give them compliments and, and praise. and You, you, you want to re really lift them up. Amen. If you really love someone. And we sang this morning our, 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 one of our praise songs, I love you, Lord. All right. And if we truthfully love the Lord, we should want to praise him regardless of our circumstances. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, so for those of us who have given our lives to Christ and you find, uh, if you find yourself having difficulty praising him, if something is standing in the way, I would suggest that you consider whether there is some sin or wrongdoing that you've engaged in. And I'm so happy that we serve a God who's able to forgive us Amen. over and over and over and over Amen. again. Amen. There may be someone here today, however, who has uh, never asked the Lord Jesus to come into their lives as Savior and as Lord. Amen. And the Bible tells us that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. It goes all the way back to the garden with the original sin. The Bible also tells us that the wages of sin is death. But there is a gift of eternal life given to each of us based on our faith in Jesus Christ. So if you do not have Jesus in your life as Lord and Savior, we invite you right now to make Jesus your choice. Because we're going to offer Christ to you. He's not ours to give away. We can simply offer him to you. There's a number on the screen, 402-451-8800. Uh, and we just ask that uh, if you are 
worshiping with us on Facebook or YouTube, uh, that you call that number if you desire prayer or if you would like to discuss with one of our connection counselors how to connect with Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you're here in the sanctuary and you've never made that choice, we invite you to come forward. One of the deacons will take you to one of the conference rooms and will help you to understand the path of salvation. Paul tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. He will give you brand new life. New life. Abundantly. Won't you come? Come just as you are. The last thing you want to do is to have the attitude that some have when they consider whether they will go to the doctor or to the hospital. They say, well, I'll go as soon as I feel better. Makes no sense, does it? So don't say that you'll come to Christ as soon as you get your life together. You do not have the power to get your life together. Jesus is the only one who can heal you and who can and will make you whole. Won't you come? New life. New life abundantly. So why don't you come? This my day. There are none to come at this time in the sanctuary, but we will continue to pray thank the Lord for you. Continue to pray and ask the Lord to bless us only as he can. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and for all of your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for the trials and tribulation that you allow us to go through. Because Lord, it gives us an opportunity to praise you for your faithfulness. Lord, I pray that you will bless all who are gathered here today in the sanctuary. I pray that you will bless those who are worshiping with us online. We ask that your Holy Spirit will touch each of us so that we leave here not the same as we arrived. That as we leave here, we have on our lips praises of your holy name. That we walk out of here, Lord, and we have the commitment to say to someone, I know a man named Jesus. Let me tell you what he's done for me. Bless us now, Lord, in the name of your mighty Son, Jesus the Christ, and all of the saints of God said, Amen, and Amen again. For returning to his Father in heaven, Jesus commissioned his followers to go and make disciples. Becoming a disciple begins with a confession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That is step one. Step two is to join a local church such as Mount Moriah and continues with a lifetime of growth in faith and fruitfulness. Call one of our pastors or connection counselors today to join this journey of discipleship. We experience the power of prayer daily at Mount Moriah. Also, our pastors post a prayer on our YouTube and Facebook pages each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. We are also commanded to study God's Word because it teaches us what is true, corrects us when we are wrong, and teaches us to do what is right. The continuation of this church's ministry would not be possible without your prayers and your financial support. Thank you so much for your generosity. Remember to view and subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook channels. There, as well as on our church website, 
www.mountmariahomaha.net. You will find sermons, pastoral prayers, and more information to help you know us and to know the Lord. Finally, we thank you for worshiping with us today and pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, that the Lord will turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.